Here I am. Kill your emperor if you wish. Fire! Yup, this is me, Napoleon. You're probably wondering what happened next. Allow me to tell you, but first, I'm gonna have to add some context. Napoleon was born in Corsica just one year after it was annexed by France, so he was technically born French. His parents sent him to military school in mainland France, where he became second lieutenant and then major general after suppressing a royalist insurrection against the revolutionary government. He commanded a French army that defeated Austria in a series of battles in Italy, signing one year later the Treaty of Campo Formio, which resulted in territorial gains for the French. Napoleon was then offered to invade England, but after determining that the British Royal Navy was far superior than France's naval forces, he went to Egypt to wipe out the British trade routes with India, where he scored a quick victory against the Mameluks at the Battle of the Pyramids, where this wholesome event took place. A Mameluk soldier demanded a duel mid-battle, and the French, instead of choosing a duelist of their own, they chose to be a straight menace, shooting the guy and looting his body. Whoa, guys, don't celebrate just yet. The French fleet had been decimated by the Royal Navy, who was far superior than France's naval forces. His focus then switched to the city of Acre, which they tried to siege, but failed. That's odd. This siege is not sieging. That's fine, sir. We'll continue sieging the city to bring glory to France. Wait, where is he? So he abandoned his army and went to France where he staged a coup and rewrote the constitution to make France a peaceful democracy. Haha, <laughs> no. He actually named himself First Consul. Then he defeated the Austrians at the Battle of Marengo and drove them out of Italy. He wrote the Napoleonic Code, which became the foundation of French civil law to this day, and made himself First Consul for life. Oh, and two years later he subtly changed that to something a bit more humble. Yeah, that's better. He sold Louisiana to the United States to finance his fleet and any future wars. Then the Battle of Trafalgar happened. Yikes. He defeated the Austrians and the Russians at the Battle of Austerlitz. Aren't you getting kind of tired of this? Shut up. Hey, what's wrong with that guy? This caused the dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire. And just in case the Austrians hadn't had enough, they got defeated once again at the Battle of Wagram. Don't even say it. He also married Josephine, but she gave him no heirs. I'm sorry, buddy, you don't exist. They divorced and he wed Mary Louise, the daughter of the Emperor of Austria, which gave him Napoleon II, or the second, but two is cooler. He then embarked on a super long military campaign and took over Moscow, which had been evacuated and burned. Hmm, that's odd. This takeover isn't taking over. When are they going to surrender? I don't think they are ever going to surrender, my emperor. Oh, what's this? Interesting. He was forced to retreat, where he suffered continuous harassment from the Russian army and lost half a million men in the process. Then, in 1813, the Portuguese, the Spanish and the British finally drove French forces off the Iberian Peninsula, which he had tried to occupy in 1808 but the invasion quickly turned into a guerrilla warfare stalemate, which proved to be Napoleon's first nail in the coffin, with the second and final one being the failed invasion of Russia. Then the Battle of the Nations happened, in which the Austrian, Russian, Prussian and Swedish troops defeated Napoleon and captured Paris in 1814. Huh, who's signing the treaty now, Napoleon? I bet you're never gonna have an epic comeback story to tell after this. <laughs> They made him sign the Treaty of Fontainebleau, which forced him to exile somewhere and to receive an annual compensation of 2 million francs. Napoleon chose to be exiled to Elba, a small island near the coast of Italy. Oh wait, I didn't even draw it. Here it is. And he was constantly surveilled by Major General Campbell. He allegedly said, I just want a simple life with my family, my little house, my cows and my mules. But being the ambitious man that he was, he had other plans. While in Elba, Napoleon ordered massive infrastructure improvements. Building roads, draining marshes, boosting agriculture, boosting mines, boosting schools, boosting, boosting, and writing a constitution for the island. Dude, you're writing yet another constitution? Yeah, I kinda enjoy writing. And he got visited. Quite a lot. 
by his wife, Mary Louise. I'm kidding, by his mistress, the Polish Countess Mary Walewska. However, most of the visitors came from France, which concerned the British. <gasps> and they said this to him. I think the British are planning on exiling you to St. Helena. <laughs> which concerned Napoleon. <gasps> so he started building an army of 2,000 men and a small navy. Sir, I think now more than ever we should really start keeping an eye on Napoleon. Nonsense. Let's go back to England to warn them of his army. What's the worst he can do? Escape while we're away by painting a ship as a British vessel? So Napoleon escaped while they were away by painting a ship as a British vessel. He felt the terms of the treaty had been broken because he wasn't receiving the payments. So he didn't have to stay in Elba either. He disembarked in Gulf Juan between Cannes and Antibes and started his march to Paris. Capture him! He's rebelling against his king! Um, actually you're not his king, as he's no longer French but Emperor of Elba. So he cannot possibly be rebelling against you. Listen here, you piece of sh On March 7, 1815, Napoleon encountered soldiers of the 5th Regiment sent to capture him. In probably one of the most tense and decisive moments in history, he said, Here I am. Kill your emperor if you wish. Fire! But no one shot. All of the soldiers put down their muskets and started chanting, Long live the emperor. Now, don't get me wrong. This is an epic comeback. I just think it would have been more epic had it happened this way. I am inevitable. But it didn't. I don't get it. Everyone loves me. Well, my king, maybe you weren't threatening to abolish the gains of the revolution. Wait, where is he? Out of fear, Louis XVIII fled the country. Meanwhile, Napoleon was being welcomed like a king everywhere he went. And without shedding a drop of blood, he finally reached Paris, making for a pretty good comeback story. This glory, however, was short-lived. <gasps> Only three months later, he found himself in the Battle of Waterloo. During the battle, the British Allied forces held the French army, which got flanked by the Prussians, causing their retreat. This defeat proved to be decisive. As the Allies entered Paris, Napoleon tried to flee to the United States, but got intercepted by British troops. He got exiled to St. Helena, where he lived the rest of his days alone. Well, that's if you don't count the 2,000 British soldiers that were sent to the island to make sure he stayed there, marking the end of one of history's greatest military leaders. <laughs>